Hey, this is Kristen Greger from Pedal and Glass Photography, and today I'm really excited to talk about something that I love talking about, and that is simplifying weddings. So, unfortunately, we live in a culture where so many people are delaying the start of their marriage just to pay for the wedding, and I think that's totally crazy and totally backwards. I think our problem comes in when we have this conception of what a wedding needs to be, and there are a lot of assumptions that go along with that, and it becomes this like bloated Cinderella explosion wedding, and if you're like most of us, budget is always an issue, so then we have this huge idea of a wedding and everything that needs to go into it. We lay our budget over top and say, how are we going to make that work? So we start pulling things out of this, you know, fairy tale crazy wedding, smushing it together, making things a little bit cheaper, and what we end up with is a ballroom style wedding, extravagant style wedding with all the different stuff, but on like a beer budget. And that doesn't turn out so well, or we end up blowing our budget and just, you know, wasting a ton of money where we didn't really need to in the first place. So instead of starting with this huge assumption about what a wedding needs to be, I always encourage people to flip it over. To say, okay, what does a wedding need to be? What do you need to have a wedding? And fortunately, that answer is really simple. All you need is a ceremony, an officiant, witnesses, a marriage license, and boom, you're done, you got a wedding. And then after that, you have to determine, okay, now that I've got the wedding, do I want to celebrate afterwards? And let that take shape according to how many guests you'd like to invite and what you can afford to feed them. It sounds so simple. So for a lot of people, that reception aspect can take on a lot of different forms. I've been to ones that are as simple as a dinner that followed the ceremony. It was really beautiful and intimate and they invited only their close family and that's what they can afford and they did it up really nice. And I've been to receptions that are like backyard barbecues. People have done um, receptions that are past hors d'oeuvres only. I've done wedding receptions that are like food trucks. And I've done, you know, the ballroom wedding thing. It's all according to what suits you, what's going to be meaningful to you, what's going to be a lot of fun, not break the bank, but also provide good quality. So I always tell people that um, I always choose the quality over the quantity of something. So rather than doing like a cheap four course meal where everything is kind of mediocre quality, for the same price opt to do something like if you did hot hors d'oeuvres for your entire reception, you could do a higher quality. And this kind of cost thing is, is the biggest factor when you're thinking about catering in your reception and you have to think of how many guests you're going to invite. And, I, and that's a personal decision, but um, I always tell people just be considerate of your family guest list and his family guest list and make sure that you're meeting somewhere in the middle there and not just like chopping it up very Spartan guest list and making enemies with people that's unnecessary. So, I don't know, just be considerate with that. But you can be as elegant or as laid back as you want that to be. And I think you can find that at every price point. So once you've thought about what your reception is going to be like, um, then you can determine, okay, what other vendors do I want to be there? So, I mean, playing off the reception thing, some people do or do not have a DJ. Some people just play music off their iPod. Some people don't have music at all. That's totally up to you. In order of hiring and um, fitting in vendors into your budget, I always say to people, choose the one that you care about the most and let the other one sort of fit into that budget. For my husband and I, it was a photographer. We hired her first. She took up the majority of our budget for that kind of thing. I've no regrets about that. And um, so we got a very high quality photographer. Um, some of the other vendors that we hired, you know, weren't as expensive as her, but it all worked out and it was totally fine. So you just have to learn to prioritize a little bit on the vendor aspect. And then everything else, you know, it's just extras. It's extraneous stuff. I will probably post a list below of things that people typically do for their wedding day that you totally don't need. You can just leave behind if you don't feel like it. Those include like bridesmaids, attendants like flower girls, aisle runners, unity candles, limos. Um, you don't need to have fancy invitation suites or expensive shoes or even expensive flowers. It's not meant to be like a draconian 
fun sucker list of things that people should never spend money on under any circumstance, but I just love to give people permission to say, I don't care about this stuff and I don't need it. And I'm not going to spend money on it. You don't need to give out gifts to the guests, like the little favor things. They end up on the tables, guys. So if you're going to do stuff like that, just be like reasonable about it. Do something really small. I think for our wedding we did um, Cosmo seeds, you know? Hey, if they left it on the table, then I take it home and I plant them. Not expensive. So those are my tips for you guys on how to keep your wedding day simple. I would love to hear from you if you have more ideas about how to make wedding days more simple and meaningful. Uh, if you want to leave me a comment, that would be fantastic. Thank you guys so much again for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.